DesignJob has a lot of digitizing tools, so let's take a minute to explore where they are and what they're used for. If I look in Design Shop on the left-hand side, you'll see the input toolbar. And this top section, the first eight icons, are going to be your digitizing icons. The first one is edit mode. That's what I'm in currently. The next one over is going to be your walk input method. And this, if I click and hold for half a second, anytime I see this little black triangle, I can click and hold for half a second and access the flyout to access any of the tools underneath of them. This icon holds a lot of my very linear tools. It holds my walk input method, my vector input method if my design shop has vector option, and then to the far right it has manual stitch input method. The walk is for creating single lines of stitching, just one right after the other. The vector is for creating vector artwork lines, and the manual stitch does just what it sounds like. It creates a stitch every time I click. If I don't click, it doesn't create a stitch. So that is a very, very manual process and used very infrequently. The one that I will use most frequently is going to be the walk input method, and I'll use that for creating fine detail work or travel stitches um, or creating my own manual underlay. Below that, you'll have your column one, and if I click and hold for half a second, you'll find your column tool. These are your more um, flexible column tools. Those are gonna be used for creating kind of mid-range um, elements that are usually used for satin stitches. I tend to use them when I'm creating uh, lettering that I am digitizing myself. To the right of those you'll find your single line elements. If I click and hold for half a second I have options on those. These all digitize pretty much the same way and you can change from one to the next in the properties after it's been created. So if you grab the wrong one and you forget you've got a way out of that. This is used for creating a line and then having a satin stitch follow along that line and be the same width all the way throughout the form. Great for borders or very linear elements as well. Down here we have our complex fills. And if I click and hold for a half a second, I get a lot of options here. I've got my traditional method, my manual method, and a unifill method, which gives me kind of every step I could possibly want in doing this. And these are for creating larger elements that are usually going to be a little bit too big and may snag and pull out, and I want a fill stitch in there or slightly more complex shapes. If I wanted to have some material lay down and stitch around it, I might use the applique tool, and that's what this little heart icon is. If I'm just creating artwork, I would use a vector fill input method. So that's what these guys are. Underneath that, I have my lettering input method. If I was creating lettering, this would be the tool that I would use. I also can insert a trim. And then beside that is a cross stitch input method, which just creates um, a look like counted cross stitch. So that is a very specialty application. Below that, we have our editing tools. These are used for modifying uh, elements that we've already digitized. So if I had a hole and I needed to input, pardon me, if I had a fill and I needed to input a hole into it, I would utilize this insert hole into selected object. So let me just grab a fill real quick. If I had a fill selected and I wanted to put a hole inside of there, I could click on this and then digitize inside of a fill and I would create a hole inside of that fill. If I wanted to change my entry and exit point, I could do that using my entry and exit tool. If I wanted to change my stitch direction, that would be the insert stitch direction tool. So I can modify my stitch direction using that. So these four are going to be my editing tools. This is for inserting splices. This allows me to divide a complex fill into subregions. So I can have even opposing stitch directions within one fill, and that can be very helpful when creating more complex shapes. Or when um, converting vector artwork into stitches, I can divide that up a little bit more easily. Below that I have my selection tools. Um, this is for selecting everything in a project. This is custom point selection, which allows me, let me get back to my edit mode, allows me to basically draw a box around what I want to select, and when I hit enter, I will select everything within that box. Previous and next element allows me to kind of drill down through my layers. When I select something, it's almost as if I'm putting my finger on it and I can only select what's on top. So if I had stitching underneath, I wouldn't get to that. If I use the previous or next element, that's basically drilling down through my stitch layers to get to the objects underneath. I can drill back up by, by um, using the select next element under point as well. Change element type allows me to change one element from one type of element to another. 
So I can change a complex fill and I can add a border with it using single line element. We can talk about that in another video. Um, and then select automatic custom shape input is basically a drag and drop. If I click on this, I can come down, choose from any of these libraries of things that I would like to have. If I wanted a bear paw, I could drag this up here. I could have a bear paw that would be a complex fill. I could scale this up and then I could <clears throat> change the color of it, add a border to it, whatever I need to do, add text around it. And I would have a much quicker way of creating a design based on some of my stock shapes. To close it, I would click on this X. So those are mostly your input methods in this uh, upper left hand corner and after we get to selecting these and you do that just by clicking on them and if you hold for a half a second you'll get that fly out and you can choose another one underneath there you're ready to start digitizing